Yes, I ought to point out while we're looking at the front end that this represents uh, because we knew it had to uh, last a bit longer, if you like, while we were while we were preparing the replacement for this car. I was allowed because by now I was I was I was the responsible for the department to to do what I'd always wanted to do, which was to which was to raise raise this area up and in fact we, we trimmed two inches which is a lot I mean oh. you know 50 millimeters cut through through the wings and everywhere so that the, the bumper could could go up the earlier cars had a fairing there part of the bodywork and I never I never really liked that solution but we, we solved that problem and because the the regulations were slightly better and we were allowed to use composites which this material is we, we transformed it and at the same time we, I knew that the, the, the radiator shell could lose two inches without a problem um, so this was smaller and also I, I said we ought to make this smaller so I always felt the original one it was okay in its day but I just felt it's a little bit more delicate looking now particularly in this lighting I think considering considering the age of the car um, I think it stands up pretty well. I, again, I have to I have to say to, that it's. I mean, the, the gaps here are, are very very good. I mean, even on this vehicle, which is you know not not brand new, um, you know the actual fit to the body is is wonderful. And well, there's no gap there. I know. Well, that's it. I mean, I, I, and I have to say that was pure engineering backing me up or yes. backing the department up. We spoke earlier about the size of the boot having to be as large as possible which gives you this, you know, quite a wide rear end of the car. A big, a big issue at this time was, similar to the bumpers, that, that legislation was changing quickly. And in fact, we had a department at, at Crew that their only job was to look at legislation and try to second guess what was going to happen. Because some of the things were, I mean, some of the crazy stuff that was being talked about was, was having a car that could survive a 50 mile an hour impact 50 miles an hour impact and just walk away from it. I mean, it was, it was causing crazy work being done. So, so we were very nervous about legislation. Some of the more, more sensible legislation was to do with things like separation between functions of a lamp. Now, if you, if you think about it, most cars before this time, but really nearly all classic cars, have generally got a plant-on lamp unit. It's a, it's a fairly simple uh, series of mouldings, obviously orange and red and so forth, with, with usually on a, a die cast polished base. And they were just, I wouldn't say they were stuck on the surface, but they were very, very simple devices really. And they just put on the surface. And that was an instant aging problem for the car. It, it just looked again, old fashioned. So one of the one of the things which I, I was really committed to right from the first time I was given any sort of opportunity was to try, I, well, I had to actually solve the idea of the, of the separation between light fit, fittings because they were in, in contrast. I mean, England and Europe and America and goodness knows where they weren't all in sync. So you, you, had, you had contrasting rules which you were trying to satisfy. And in the end, the only solution I could think of was to, was to literally fill the back of the car. I mean, obviously you've got a number plate, but otherwise fill the back of the car with potential lensing, which you could then, you could probably change the actual injection of colored plastic to actually achieve the different functions. So if, once you've got this canvas, potential canvas of, of lighting, you could then really do what you like as far as what goes where. You had separations between turn indicators, which had to be outboard and stop lamps. You know, it was a balancing act. It was a balancing act between immo you know, immovable forces, really. So, so we came up with a solution which was generally accepted pretty well. They, they, the powers that be liked the idea of this completely new look. And I mean, if you look at the back of a shadow, 
and look at the back of an SZ, there is just no comparison. They, they really isn't. And this is this is business about evolution, that there was no natural progression beyond the shadow. The shadow was, was what it was, but all the vocabulary was, was sort of frozen in time. So we had to break the mold somehow. And, and this is the way that was chosen to do it. Some people have said this is quite an American feel to it. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't argue. And if, if I've, I've learned over the years never to argue with anyone's opinion because, <laughs> you know. But you America know, would have been one of the biggest markets. The, no one. I've, 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 the Americans have never complained about this sort of appearance. In other words, they, yeah. the, the presence, and you're back to presence. You know, if you can, you can accuse the, the English or, or, the, or the Brits as, as being a bit reserved. And, and, and the, little, the little sort of off-the-shelf lamp unit here is, you know, a bit low-key, not, not pushing it too much, you know. But in actual fact, it wouldn't pass the law anymore. And, and, and this would, and it, and it, give, it gave the presence that, that marketing wanted. And when you see it in comparison to the small silver shadow, I mean, it's a big development. It is. It, it was an instant difference. And you follow these at night, or just see them in general, uh, this, this solution, I believe, was the right one at the time. 